What I am going to cover in this one is how to make these green circles that are kind of overlaid on the background. This is kind of a little bit more complex or harder to figure out CSS trick, or at least it was for me. So I will share this in this video and then we'll wrap it up in the next video with actually setting up this join the waitlist. So first thing to know is I have these SVGs, which are simply the circles. So there's three of them. And they're three different colors, the default, the light, and the bright. The bright we actually are already using on the circles right here. So we're only going to be using the default and the light, which are these two here. Now these circles are going to be positioned above the backgrounds, but below the text. So you can see when we shrink this, it does go below the text right there. And the way it's laid out, it kind of doesn't go behind stuff too often, but you can see at this point it is behind the images and then it's also behind the text. So it is like a secondary background essentially. And we'll be able to control that with the Z index. And some of that has already been set up within our CSS files. Let's go ahead and create these overlays as their own component. So we'll create a new file and we're gonna call this the node overlay. And we'll need to import React images. And then also we're going to create a new CSS file. Back in the component itself, it will be kind of simple. Let me just paste it in here and explain it. So we have our component node overlay and it really is just gonna be four images. So if you go through the live version, you can see there's one image up there. This one is the second on the left. And then the third is over here on the right. And the fourth is finally down here towards the bottom. So we have the four images defined here and they're all going to be a size of 300 by 300. And each one of them is going to have a custom CSS class. So node one, node two, node three, and node four. You'll notice node four also is not gonna be available on the small screens. If you go here on node four, which is this one, on the very small screens, it is going to disappear. And that is because the third node, which is right here, is going to be kind of lower at that point. So if it was still there, there would be kind of two back to back, a little bit too close. So I chose to just remove that. So you'll also notice the image itself is different for the first one and the other three are just using the node light. Now where this setup really happens is going to be in the CSS, but let's go ahead and add this to our homepage right now so that you can see what it looks like without the CSS. And in our index here above the hero, we can add the node overlay and we will need to import this as well. So now in our development version, this is what it will look like with no custom CSS. So we just have the four circles right here. Obviously that's not what we want. So let's go ahead and add the CSS to position those where we actually want them to be. So first we're going to set the position to absolute and the Z index to zero for all of our four nodes. And if you do that by itself, they will just disappear. So next we can add the actual locations for them. So the first one is node one and we want that to be halfway off the screen. So since the node one itself is 300 pixels, we're going to go negative 150 pixels and we're going to do the same thing with the right so we want this to basically go halfway off the right and halfway up the top which you can see is what it's doing right there so we only see a quarter of the circle because half of it is pushed up this way and half of it is pushed over this way lastly we did change the z index for this one to be a z index of two and the reason for this is because it is on top of this background here so you can see when you close this a little bit, it's still behind the text, but it is always on top of the background. And it also is on top of these lines here. So this is due to some Z indexes that we already set in our hero module here. So you can see the H1, the images, and the paragraphs are at a Z index of three. So that is why they go in front of the node. But we also have a Z index here for the background, which is going to be set to, I believe, one. Well, our default Z index is going to be one for the entire main component, which is this entire page. So since that is one, everything on that will be one. And basically by setting this Z index to zero, all of these nodes will be 
behind our main content. So a little bit of extra needed to be done here because of this secondary background, but since the rest of these are contained in a Z index of one, setting a Z index of zero for the rest of them will ensure that they are actually behind everything. So for the other three nodes, the position will be slightly different if it is on desktop or mobile, and we can change this with media queries. So let me add the next three in here and then I'll kind of discuss it a little bit. So for node two, three, and four, the default values here are for the smallest screen. So if we look at this on a mobile device, you can see the first node is still in the same position it would be if the screen was large, which is fine. The second node, however, is, we mustn't have saved this. The second node will be kind of right below the phone and not on the phone. Now, this is going to be different depending on what size device you use because we are using the screen size so we're taking 100% of the screen size and then we're going another 10% down and that's where we're putting the node. So this is something you can definitely play around with, but we are setting it for the mobile devices of 110 vertical height. But then on the desktop devices, we're setting it to 90 vertical height. And you can see if we look at it like this, it will be 90 vertical height. So you do see it a little bit here still, but that's kind of the gist of it. You can play around with these. Uh, and set the position from the top and from the right or the left. This is kind of a good thing to do as a last step because once you have your page laid out, you can go through and decide where you want these to be located and then go ahead and add them onto the page wherever you like. Now, there are other ways to do this. For instance, we could put the node directly in this component so it would always be tied to this component. And if your page was more complex or changing a lot, that might be a better idea. You could, for instance, create a component section here and the node could be, you know, linked to that component. Hopefully you found this useful and you're able to add some cool overlays to your landing pages. This video is just one in a series covering exactly how to build the Rhodes landing page, which you can see at RhodesAudio.com. In the next video, I'll be talking about how to add this email collection and how to actually start collecting user emails using ConvertKit. So if you want to see how to do that, go ahead and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.